he was after coming under fire for sticking to his trip schedule following the Brussels attacks, dancing, golfing, having a great time. The president insists that the terrorists win if he doesn't get to do what he wants. But is this the right response? Joining us now, a terrific Easter morning political panel, GOP strategist Boris Epstein, Kristen Tate, author of Government Gone Wild, and Ryan Gierdusky of Red Alert Politics. It's great to see you all this morning. I'm going to start this way. Okay. Ryan, do the terrorists win if the president doesn't get to golf? No, uh, but I, it would be it would be it would be a great incentive for the president to respond in a more pragmatic way than just sitting there and saying, you know, we should believe in freedom and 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 plurality and democracy and secularism, and he should actually sit there and say, okay, these are policies we should um, articulate, we should fight for, and uh, he's not doing that, and that's a void being left open for the presidential candidates, and you see it in Trump, and you see it in in um, well. Less so in Clinton, but you still still see some. You see it in Bernie Sanders. I yeah. mean, all this whole race is a reaction, of course, against Obama. Nobody says that, but it seems true to me. I know you're not allowed to say that golfing and dancing after a terror attack is arrogant and stubborn, but it kind of looks it. Absolutely. Look, here's what Obama's response was. He did the wave at this baseball game <laughs> with Castro. Then he uh, tangoed in Argentina. That was his response. He gave 51 seconds to addressing the Brussels attack when he gave his spe speech in Cuba. 51 seconds. And he did it in a very, um, in a way that made it seem like he didn't even want to be talking about it. This is our president. Do you remember after 9-11 what the UK did? They played the national anthem outside of the Queen's Palace. That was a beautiful moment. This was Brussels 9-11, and Obama could not care less. Yeah, and Tony Blair came over. Now, Boris, like a lot of my favorite people, I think you're an immigrant to this country, yes. pro-immigration. But why does the Brussels terror attack require us to bring in tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees? Why is that a natural response? It absolutely does not. It, it seems, seems demented. It like, seems like using a horrible, horrible event and a crisis for some sort of liberal, crazy benefit, and that's what Obama is doing. You've had pretty much a lame duck president acting like a lame duck president for eight years, seven years now. Yeah. And this is the worst I've ever seen. I mean, this is terrible. The the scene of him doing the wave, dancing, now now golfing. American people want to be comforted, right? They want to be comforted and not told, well, now, because this is happening in Europe, we need to bring the refugees here. We're seeing what it's done to Europe. It's ripped Germany, Belgium, France apart. Why are we doing the same to our country? It's, it does seem like there's some sort of ulterior motive that I simply I do not understand. I think Americans, in the wake of a terror attack, want to be lectured on their moral inferiority <laughs> by their supercilious president. <laughs> I think, I think that, that's the impression. Don't, don't exactly. let in people who are conducting those right. attacks. This is the result Europe. of your bigotry, right. America. That's yeah. always the message. So, uh, Ryan, to the Democratic race, which is pretty unbelievable all of a right. sudden. Bernie Sanders last night swept three states, and not just one. Now, of course, they're proportional, unfortunately, the Democratic side, but by like 80 percent in the case of Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii, the other two, by huge, huge margins. Why can't Hillary put this man away? Because... Hillary has no message she's running on besides, you know, I mean, she, Bill's out there slamming Obama. He's the one person slamming the last eight years of the presidency. She's running the, as if as if George Bush is still in the White House. And um, she really has no new ideas. She and no one and no one believes her. She lacks authenticity. She lacks um, a demeanor that that says that she's going to change something for the next eight years. And every person that I know, I mean, I know a lot of Democrats from New York City. I'm and sorry. <laughs> I know a lot of Democrats. None of them besides the older ones who are more established are for Hillary. Well, of course, that that's the thing. Talk I mean, if you look at the numbers at Democratic voters under 30, I mean, in some states two weeks ago, it was 90 percent for Bernie Sanders. So we spent all this time, Kristen, looking at the drama on the Republican side, which is real. But the Democratic side seems ripe for a similar kind of revolution right now. Well, look, Bernie is Hillary's annoying little attack chihuahua. He's annoying. He's creating some disruptance, but he will not get in the way of her nomination. Only the FBI can really do that at this point. But I will say that... Uh, he will make it harder for Hillary in the general election because Bernie has been able to get this rabid passion behind his campaign. Hillary has not been able to do that. She's a very stiff, very cold candidate. And all these Bernie supporters are not going to be too excited to go show up for Hillary at the polls. I mean, look, I'm a millennial. On my Facebook feed, I see all these millennials posting about Bernie. They're super excited about him. I see a bunch of people saying, hey, even if this man doesn't get the nomination, I'm going to write in Bernie on my, on my ballot. Well, I think a lot of people for well, the record, we're all millennials. <laughs> <laughs> right. Boris? 
I mean, they're really pretty close. They're within several, 300, I think, Under delegates. Under 300, it's right about 250. Right, so why would the Democratic Party have superdelegates, which are obviously an offense against the idea of democracy? Right, this was their move in the 80s. They had a commission that came out and said, well, to protect against insurgent candidates, we're going to have these right. superdelegates who are elected officials and these super-duper crazy people who nobody knows who they are, right? So, you, And then they can swing their allegiances. So there's about a 440 superdelegate difference now between Clinton and Sanders. Sanders. But those people on a dime can turn. So we'll see. Sanders already won 14 it's states. Amazing. You don't know what's going to happen. As a hedge against the will of the people, we'll have superdelegates. And it might happen on both parties, right? Who Thank knows? you for joining us. I Thanks. think you all are coming back later yeah. in the show. We're glad you are. Thanks. Delicious. Mm. All right, 41 minutes after the hour. Here's what's coming up on Fox Friends Weekend. The president is coming under fire for doing the tango and sticking to his schedule after the Brussels attack, but Secretary of State Kerry is defending him. Life doesn't stop because. Um, uh, one uh, terrible incident takes place. In Echoing the reason the president gave. Well, is that the correct political response? Our panel is on that coming up next. Well, the president hitting the links this weekend after coming under fire for sticking to his trip schedule following the Brussels attacks. The president insists if he can't golf, the terrorists win. Is that the right response? Here again to react, our political panel. Joining us now, Republican strategist Boris Epstein, Kristen Tate, govern author of Government Gone Wild, and Ryan Gurdusky of Red Alert Politics. Boris, it's really, let me ask you a philosophical question. Is the president's main task as commander in chief to A, protect the country, or B, save the world? I think he, he perceives it to be C, which is go do the wave with dictators, <laughs> dance the tango. There's another option. Dance the tango. But in all seriousness, what he's done this past week was pathetic, it was sad, and he's completely derelict in his duties. As the president of the United States, he didn't have to come back, but he should have made a real speech on the terrorist attack and comforted the American people. This is why people are joining Trump, because Trump is somebody who would know what to do. He would know that you have to go out there and act serious, be a serious leader, and not do what Barack Obama did. Why did he have to go to, fine, you went to Cuba. It was a historic, in your eyes, on Obama's eyes visit. Right. Why did you have to go on to Argentina? Come home, Americans are dying in Europe. Come home, make the American people feel comfortable. Well, exactly. This is not a, just a partisan issue, too, though, Christian. If you look at the polling, there's no constituency right. of size for importing hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees. Nobody's for that because they're going to bear the consequences of this. Not the elites who make the decisions, but ordinary people. Absolutely, and that's the thing. Uh, Obama, right after the attack, he, he had the audacity to, to tell us that ISIS does not pose an existential threat to us. And then Hillary continues saying, oh, we have to keep letting these people in because not letting them in isn't who we are. You've got to be kidding me. Terrible. These people do not take our security seriously. They're sitting up there in their you know, protected homes. They all have security. They have secret service. They're not living in real neighborhoods hoods with the rest of Americans. What's it going to take to get these Democratic politicians to take this seriously? Unfortunately, Tucker, I think it might take another 11, 9-11. Well, more unfortunately, it's not just Democratic politicians. There's a consensus on the Republican side that we're good people. We must do this. I want to get to the Democratic primary, though, because I think we've undercovered it in general, the press, and it's so interesting. Yeah. Bernie Sanders continuing to crush Hillary Clinton in some of these states, three last night, what does this say about the strength of her campaign? Is this ominous? You know, I don't know why a 69-year-old, 68-year-old woman who's been in politics for 30 years and changed on every single position can't find a constituency to sit there and run with her. But that's the problem with it. And uh, Bernie Sanders, for whatever reason, there are a million reasons, I think there's a cult um, uh, clumping to him. And, uh, um, in the college campuses where you necessarily, no, not necessarily know why you're supporting right. Bernie, but because your friends are, there is an attachment to that. And there's also a bullying thing where if you have a different opinion amongst millennials, let's say to support Trump or whoever on the right, they'll sit there and they'll bully you until you sit there. Well, no, that, that's it's true. It's like on being on the view. So you'll get bullied. But here's my theory, though, that the candidates with an actual message, who have a, whether I agree with it or not, but if it's a coherent message, they're succeeding, and those who are running on, say, their gender right. are not. Right, and those who have changed positions throughout their whole career, like Hillary Clinton, are now ceding the stage to Bernie Sanders. 
Bernie Sanders isn't winning. Hillary Clinton is losing. She's always been a bad national candidate. She's only really won layup elections in New York. Otherwise, she completely failed in 08 to another insurgent candidate in Obama. And now she's failing again. But Trump is the best candidate she's ever faced. When she, she probably, listen, Hillary will be the nominee. And Trump is going to be the Republican nominee. That is going to be a very interesting election. Trump is going to be the toughest candidate, the toughest candidate she's ever faced. And she's going to lose to him because in the debates, he'll be able to pivot. He'll be able to attack her. And she will not be able to respond in any coherent way because she never has been. Well, in a year like this, would you rather be the candidate who represents change or the status quo? Well, obviously, in this election, it's very hip to be an outsider. People are hungry for something new. They're hungry for change. And that's one of the reasons why Bernie Sanders yep. is doing so yeah, well. I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being commanded to end this segment. <laughs> Not because what you're saying isn't compelling. It is, but because we're completely out of time. Okay. I really appreciate you all coming. Sorry I shortchanged you. Come back. No problem. <laughs> change. Thank you, Tucker. Change. Exactly.